Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today. Sorry we're slightly late, but it won't be the first time. Um, we are going to be talking today about JavaScript, mostly, and what I've been working on the last month, basically, is um, developing a testing framework and toolkit for the Digix contracts. Um, it's been quite an interesting journey, I guess, because of the nature of the Solidity code base that we're working with. It's quite complex, lots of different contracts to work with, and quite an extensive testing toolkit. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we are Digix. I'm uh, Chris from Digix, who worked on the front end. Uh, this is the beautiful user experience we're going to be um, delivering very soon. And whilst this is completed, um, and yes, I'm a JavaScript developer. I've dabbled mostly on the front end, but with a bit of back end as well. So I figured I'd um, lend my hand with the, the back end, more kind of code level stuff that's not user interface driven. Um, and yes, as you might imagine, um, as a JavaScript developer, I was instantly attracted to the Truffle framework. Um, I did give Dabble a, Dabble a go. Um, it was fun, but the, uh, the, the tool set around JavaScript Truffle in general is for me just a, um, a winner in that department, at least at the moment. I'm sure as things progress, uh, other frameworks will become more mature, better options will become available. But right now, I think Truffle is the, the hottest thing in testing Solidity at the moment, at least with JavaScript. And the reason for that is because it's very um, mature uh, in terms of what's happening right now in JavaScript. All of the latest buzzwords in the JavaScript world are part of Truffle as well. So if you're using Webpack, um, modern languages, uh, ES6, um, and the, the testing frameworks that we're already used to as JavaScript developers, like Mocha, that's all built into Truffle, and we're leveraging that. Overall, I'd say the current state of things is pretty good. I mean, it could be better, um, but Solidity is new, therefore testing it is also new. So we are, as diligent programmers, have to be in the position where we're going to be making our own tools. So in order to improve things, we need to create these tools, put them out there for everyone, and then we can hopefully compound each other's efforts to make development a lot easier. The goal for me in the last month was to create a, I guess, a boilerplate um, tooling kit uh, that makes it easy to write tests in a readable, writable, portable, and replayable way. What I mean by portable is that it can be used by different developers in the same team, can be transferred over to different people to work on the same project, and replayable, meaning that there can be the same tests um, can be replayed on different environments, different blockchains, even virtual environments. Um, and basically, in the course of the last month, I've run into various problems with the current state of things um, and built some tools to help solve those problems. So I'm going to showcase three of those tools today. And the first one is called Sigmate. So this is a transaction signing tool. It's essentially um, F Lite wallet, but in your testing environment to make it easier to uh, <coughs> send transactions from different users, various different things. Um, the problem is that right now, there's an assumption that the transactions that are sent in your testing environment come from the node, your Coinbase accounts, basically. and with this tool, I wanted to make it easy to have different developers use the same key store, transfer it around. It's node agnostic. It doesn't matter whether you're using Parity or Geth or um, Test RPC. You can use the same um, accounts set up, and you don't have to manage keys on the node itself. So this is what we'd be usually doing, um, writing, managing keys for each of these specific environments in a separate place, and having potentially specific uh, tests written for those different environments based on the, the keys, basically, and having to worry about all that. When you get into the situation where you have multiple different test environments, multiple different development uh, deployment environments, then it gets a little bit tricky to manage. If you have a large team, a large code base, sharing the keys, managing which things um, need to be making transactions, it gets quite complicated. So uh, that's where Sigmate comes in. It's the central point where your accounts can be managed in your testing environment, regardless of the node, regardless of what you're connecting to, transactions are signed in your tests themselves. So that's not been left up to the, uh, uh, the node. <coughs> the result is you have this persistent data store that's compatible with whatever kind of node you might run into the future. And um, it's secure, it's encrypted. Um, you're not um, having to manage all these different keys that might um, 
become complicated, as I've shown. And you can share them easily with your dev team. You can encrypt them in your repo and then check it out, share the password. There you go. What it does is creates a, uh, a SIGMATE folder in your root directory with a, a typical um, eth light wallet style HD wallet. When it boots up, it funds those accounts with the Coinbase account. So before your tests run, they get funded with an amount of Ether that you prescribe. Um, you can name accounts. So the accounts that you create will be labeled with specific roles within your test environment. So you might have a deployer role, an admin role, a namespace admin, something like that, and then your different users that will be using the contract system. So this makes it, um, if you've ever run into a test and you see accounts number two and you've got no idea what it means, in this situation it's very explicit, so you, you have less overhead to figure out what's actually happening in your tests. And it makes it really nice to write the tests themselves because it's very self-explanatory. <coughs> Truffle integration comes with it. It basically plucks the contracts out of global namespace and wraps them with the Web3 um, hooked provider and causes them to be sending transactions from the, uh, the light wallet instead of the, the node. And then you can just use your regular test setup as you'd expect with a user's object instead of accounts. It also works for deployment um, in your migration steps in Truffle. You would just hook it in as you would normally do. So that's the first tool, just a little um, helper library there. The next one is Contest, which is a, an amalgamation of contract and testing. Basically, the problem here is um, syntax. It's trying to solve the issue of writing complicated, potentially, tests that test lots of different things. Um, you don't want this kind of situation with Rule Web 3, where you end up in callback hell. Um, you're, you're writing a chain of um, asynchronous operations that end up going really deep. So um, Truffle tried to solve this problem by using uh, a library called Pudding, um, which wraps contracts in promise-style syntax. So you can write your tests more like this, which is much more readable, and you don't go into that callback hell. Um, it can be a little bit complicated to read, though. Um, like, this isn't immediately obvious what's happening. Once you get used to it, it's all right but I felt we could do a little bit better than that. Um, and this is con Contest. So this is the alternative API that I've written to make it a lot easier to write those tests in a more um, readable, understandable, and less uh, amount of code way. So in the uh, previous example here, each step is a transaction or a call, whereas over here, we're wrapping multiple calls and multiple transactions into the same style. So for example, in this, <coughs> get balance, we're not passing a, um, a specific transaction. We're saying very declaratively, this is what we want to see as the, as the result of get balance when being called from admin and then customer. And it will create a transaction. Um, it will create a call and assert the outputs based on the input that you give it. So this is passing an object and saying, well, we expect these results. It will pass if those are the results. Um, in a very similar way, you can pass transactions in an array format that will be executed um, in series. And um, this will also uh, ensure the transaction happens, um, but also then uh, assert the result of the transaction. So um, you can make sure that things are going as you'd expect in a very clear way. Um, this is the basic API. Um, there are some more things like watching events. So in the next block, if you want to make sure the events are happening, you can just pass in um, a series of objects with the expected output of the event. And it will assert true if they all happen. If any of the events don't happen or something that you expect doesn't happen, it will fail. <coughs> uh, we also have the idea of transformers. So instead of asserting a specific value, you can pass a function. And it will resolve true or false based on the output of the, um, the transaction. There's also um, the idea of throwing, uh, which I don't have in here. But if you add um, the keyword throw into your assertion statement, it will assert that that transaction throws. So instead of worrying about catch events, all that kind of stuff, you can just say, I expect this to throw. And it will pass if it throws. <coughs> can we do any better than that? I believe so. Um, whilst writing 
this framework, I noticed that it was very similar to um, Cucumber, which is basically a BDD style syntax for writing tests, where you can, in a very uh, descriptive English style, um, explain what the contract can do. And I think in the future, um, it's not very far to transpile this into some sort of um, contest style syntax that people can then really understand. And you could then potentially tie these tests to actually deployed code and have someone else run the tests, make sure they pass. And then you can, then you can show people we have this script of English that we can guarantee matches the contract itself. You deploy that and then the tests are there and people have at least some guarantee that it will run in the way they expect. The final tool uh, is Doxity, a documentation generator for Solidity. Um, so there is this relatively little known thing in Solidity called NatSpec, Natural Language Specification, where you can write um, in your comments descriptions about the um, methods that are next <coughs> to the comments. Um, there is a Solidity command called sulk combine JSON, and you, you pass in a bunch of these different um, uh, output types that you want to receive, like ABIs, ASMs, uh, abstract syntactic trees, I believe, yeah. Uh, I've been learning a lot as a, as a JavaScript developer, um, and various other things. And the important one here is the dev doc and the user doc. So these are the output JSON files from the NatSpec uh, definitions that you put in your comments. So here you can see this is the output of the previous command. Uh, you get this JSON file um, with basically the comments that I previous, previously put in and they're linked to specific uh, methods in the contract. So I was hoping that there'd be an off-the-shelf version of this very basic tool that converts those JSON into documentation. There wasn't, so we created one. And this is one of the outputs of Doxity. Um, basically, it's a, a React HTML static generator that you can then stick in your GitHub pages, and it will have a very pretty interface for browsing <coughs> the commented methods, the ABI, the bytecode, and the source code, syntactic highlighting, etc. So the idea here is that you take the, uh, the NAT spec, and that converts it into one of these blocks that describe what the function does. You can then send this documentation out. Um, people can read it more easily than the source code. There are still some things missing, though, that we're waiting for Solidity to update. So right now, NAT spec is not actually fully implemented in Solidity. It doesn't work with modifiers, structs, events. It basically just works with your ABI definition. So <coughs> we were thinking about doing some uh, AST parsing, where you like parse the, the tree and then figure out what goes where. But we thought we'd better just wait for Solidity to update, and then that will be feature complete. Um, yeah, the other thing is inheriting methods from other contracts that you want to be documented is we've got to figure out whether they should resolve or whether they should not, right? So should they be in the Solidity output? Speaking of AST, this is what it looks like. If you wanted to build some magical uh, interfaces that really parse the code, you can go very down into depth about what the, uh, the Solidity contract does. And you can write it all in JavaScript. So that was it, a quick 15-minute uh, intro to what I've been working on the last month. Thank you. Mm-hmm.